Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport, where travelers are one stop away from world destinations. Connections on Delta Airlines to Atlanta are available daily. Close, convenient, CIRA. More at CIRA.com. Domestic gun violence deaths are on the rise in Illinois, warranting a closer look at a case here in Normal. It's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Tuesday, August 20th. I'm Ryan Denham, and this is WGLT's The Leadoff. Now let's lead off with an update on the murder of a Unit 5 teacher last May. New records obtained by WGLT through the Freedom of Information Act show the gun used to kill Amy Moore came from out of state. WGLT's Lauren Warnicke has more. The police investigation into Matthew Moore reveals he traveled to Iowa to buy the gun he used to kill Amy Moore and himself. Police records obtained by WGLT show Matthew Moore essentially purchased a pistol and ammunition on Vibes from an independent seller in Des Moines two months before the killings. Moore was the subject of an order of protection, which revokes firearm identification or FOID cards. It's an entirely functionally like honor system. That's Shelby Hoffman Binder of the network. That's an Illinois based umbrella group of more than 40 domestic violence agencies. You're supposed to sit down and fill out a form that says where you are going to give your firearms now that you cannot legally possess them. Then you mail that with your FOID card to the Illinois State Police. Moore presented the dealer an Illinois gun license he had reported to Illinois State Police as lost or destroyed. Normal PD interviewed the seller, who said he was suspicious at first, but noted his nice car, friendly disposition, and an Illinois FOID card. Sarah Breeden is the legislative lead for the gun safety group McLean County Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. The fact that he went to another state shows that at a federal level, we need to do something different. A background check would have shown Moore's card was invalid. However, Iowa does not require background checks for independent gun sales. For the leadoff, I'm Lauren Warnicke. Here are some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. Bloomington police say they are investigating a weekend shooting on West Graham Street in which a 21-year-old man was hospitalized. A nearby residence was also hit by gunfire. The Illinois Conservation Police is investigating a boating accident at the LaSalle Lake State Fish and Wildlife Area It resulted in the deaths of two Indiana men who were fishing with their seven-year-old granddaughter. It happened Sunday near Marseilles. It's about an hour north of Bloomington Normal. Bloomington Public Works will no longer accept dirt, sod, or any other waste that includes dirt for curbside pickup or for drop-off at the city's Citizen Convenience Center. And ISU's women's basketball coach, Kristen Gillespie, has signed a one-year contract extension that'll keep her in normal through the 2028-29 season. She's led the Redbird for the last seven seasons. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. It is day two of the Democratic National Convention, and Illinois delegates kicked off the festivities yesterday with some fiery speeches, surprise guests, and some cat puns. Each morning, Illinois Democrats are gathering in downtown Chicago to rally before each day's events. WBEZ's Alex Degman and Tessa Weinberg have more from the first breakfast of the week. Alex starts things off. At a ballroom in the Royal Sinesta in downtown Chicago, the air is festive. Balloon sculptures resemble the American and Chicago flags, and there's even a coconut tree, a nod to Kamala Harris's speech that turned into a viral meme. It's all to celebrate the Democratic Party's presidential ticket. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker says Kamala Harris and Tim Walls go together. Like a pairing of a great craft beer from Illinois with the tastiest Chicago hot dog. House Speaker Chris Welch says Illinois Democrats are ready to play a historic role, like they did when Barack Obama was elected president. You know, and we're going to do it again with a woman whose uniquely American story also included a childhood in Evanston and Urbana. I bet you guys didn't know that about Kamala Harris. I'm Tessa Weinberg. Joining Illinois' delegation was a special guest who was a hop, skip, and a jump from her home state of Minnesota, First Lady Gwen Walls. Good morning, Illinois! You are my Monday morning first period. We're going to school today, stop! It's been just two weeks since her husband, Minnesota Governor Tim Walls, was announced as Harris's running mate. Walls took the moment to introduce herself to the room packed with Illinois delegates. I'm a retired military spouse. Right now I'm the first lady of Minnesota, which is a pretty good gig. And for so much of my life, I've been an educator. 
The Walls' met each other in a Nebraska classroom, and she says that's where they discovered their shared belief that education can be transformative. And one of the things I love most about Tim is that he believes in his very core so strongly that every child deserves a chance to get ahead. Walls encouraged people to, quote, do the work in front of you, to turn out the vote. But Terry O'Sullivan was more blunt. He's the former president of the Laborers International Union of North America. This sexist, racist, draft-dodging, lying son of a bitch has got to go once and for all. We not only have to win, we have to kick his ass all the way back to Mar-a-Lago, put a fork in him, and end Donald Trump's presence in our country, in our world, brothers and sisters. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker closed out the morning. He jumped on a chair to get the crowd going and even worked in some cat jokes. Now, I happen to be part of those childless cat people uh, in America. His quip was in reference to Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance's previous comments describing Democrats as childless cat ladies. But Booker had more where that came from. You all are catastic. You all are clawsome. These dad jokes are perfect. <laughs> Come on, executive director, I had to do this. What do you call a guy like me with no kids that still tells dad jokes? You call him a faux pas. Oh, the pain in this room is palpable, is palpable. Jokes aside, Booker says the stakes are high come election day. And let us tell a story. We rose to the challenge. We met the obstacles that we overcame, that we fought, because when we fight, thank you, Illinois, thank you. But U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth says while the kids are energized, it's still important to, quote, make sure that all the coconuts get out there and vote. I'm Tessa Weinberg. And I'm Alex Degman. You can hear live NPR special coverage from the DNC in Chicago tonight and every night this week, starting at 8. And coming Thursday, we'll have some reporting from WGLT's Charlie Schlenker and Emily Bollinger, who are headed to Chicago to talk to McLean County politicos with a ringside seat to the convention. And before we let you go, Bloomington's Transportation Commission meets today at 4 o'clock at the Government Center. On the agenda is a potential recommendation to change local truck routes and truck restrictions. And that's it for today. I'm Ryan Denham. The show is produced by Rosalie Truback. You can subscribe to The Leadoff on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts.